The video you're about to watch is an instructional tool for the Easy Grabber mobile unit. Pay attention to the content of this video as you are solely responsible for the safety of the entire system and all users. All Easy Lifeline equipment is considered part of a complete fall protection system. Do not replace or modify any components to a fall protection system without consulting the original manufacturer. Any unauthorized substitution, the user must be fully evaluated or tested by a qualified person before the new system is put into use. The Easy Grabber Fall Rest Systems are designed for vertical falls where fall hazards exist. This equipment is to be used in conjunction with a self-retracting lifeline. This fall arrest system is designed to provide overhead anchorage anytime, anywhere, on any job site. Training on the Easy Grabber should be conducted under the supervision of a qualified person. Prior to use, you must understand all instructions fully. Failure to do so could result in a serious or fatal injury. Like all personal protective equipment, live, hands-on training of the grabber is essential to help understand the capabilities and limitations. Training should be conducted as an initial introduction as well as periodically for review and additional practice. While the training content within this video is limited to the grabber fall arrest system, users must be reminded that they are required to be trained in the following topics. Recognizing fall hazards and eliminating fall hazards when possible. Training in personal fall arrest systems. Understanding components such as anchorage, body wear, and connectors. Selecting proper equipment for each application. Calculating free fall distance. Understanding maximum arresting and impact forces. Implementing rescue plans inspect and maintain equipment, understand the limitations and requirements of the equipment. In short, the user must understand the job site environment and be aware of workplace factors. The user attached properly to a self-retracting lifeline is connected to the frame via a swivel anchor. All components are required to limit the maximum average arresting force to a combined 1,800 pounds. In accordance with OSHA applicable standards, the user should not exceed the 310-pound maximum weight limit per anchor point. All equipment shall be inspected visually by the end user prior to each use and at least monthly by a competent person other than the end user. Detailed inspection records shall be kept. An inspection chart is provided in the owner's manual, and the forms are readily available in digital form within the Hog Tracker system for your convenience. If damage is found or questionable conditions are apparent, or if the unit has been involved in a fall, remove the equipment from service immediately and tag Do Not Use. The swivel anchor must be replaced after a fall has occurred. Failure to remove equipment that has been damaged or has been involved in a fall or where its condition is questionable could lead to serious or fatal injury. The instructional manual should be always kept in the protective container. Prior to use, you must use the inspection log section of the instruction manual to document all inspections. Read and fully understand the operator's instruction manual. If you do not understand the instructions, then have a supervisor or a competent person explain them to you. Read and familiarize yourself with all safety decals for your own protection. All counterweight components, including track system, must be inspected for wear and positioning. As an engineering safeguard, the mast is designed not to extend unless the counterweights are positioned away from the mast and the position switch is fully engaged. However, the counterweights must be fully inspected for damage and functionality. Watch for pinch points when positioning the counterweights. The anchor points must be inspected prior to use. Inspect the swivel anchor for distortion or cracks. If any damage or missing parts are detected, the unit shall be removed from service and corrected by authorized repair agents or the manufacturer. Units should be marked, do not use until repaired. Inspect the connection points, nuts and bolts and welds. Look for cracks or abrasions. Inspect the hydraulic lines for damage or leakage. If damage is detected to lines or to the hydraulic system, do not place system in service. Be sure hydraulic fluid is properly maintained and remove unit from service if found defective or not properly secured.
After all previous inspections are complete and no damage has been detected, you may begin setup. Be sure to have the unit close to your work area prior to setup. It is time to extend rear outriggers. Start by removing the hitch pin. Next, extend the outrigger and replace the pin. Once the hitch pin has been secured, the jack must be lowered to support the unit. At no time are the wheels to support the unit while in use. The next step is to lower the front jacks into place. Again, the wheels shall never be used to support the unit while in use. Now that the jacks have been lowered and are supporting the unit, be sure the unit is level. Mud seals should be used in mud, snow, or any other condition where the ground surface could be soft, loose, or otherwise questionable. Prior to plugging in the remote control power cord, make sure the power switch is in the off position. Once the power cord is plugged in, turn the power switch on. The mass should be raised to an appropriate ergonomic level. Once at a comfortable level, you can attach the self-retracting lifeline to the swivel anchor. Use only approved fall arrest components. These shall be inspected prior to each use. Before raising the mast, you need to attach a tagline to the hook of the self-retracting lifeline. The tagline allows the hook to maintain placement of the housing of the self-retracting lifeline. Properly connect to the unit before accessing elevated areas. All counterweight must be properly placed away from the mast and the position switch is fully engaged. Once you have raised the mass position, the unit to the desired location, the Easy Grabber mobile unit provides overhead anchor connection anywhere on the job site. Each Easy Grabber unit comes with a voltage distance chart for your safety. While using the fall protection equipment around overhead power line, you must contact the electric supplier to obtain the power line voltage and proper safe distance. The chart is only a suggested safe distance. Failure to follow these instructions could result in a serious or fatal electrical incident. The Easy Grabber is designed to be towed on public roads or the highway. When connecting the unit to the vehicle, raise the unit with jacks. The unit should be raised enough to clear the tow ball. Jacks must be rotated to the lowest position prior to towing. Once the mobile unit has been connected to the vehicle, chains must be connected to the vehicle hitch system. Next, inspect the master links on the safety chain. They must be secured and properly connected. The handle must be secured prior to towing the unit. Failure to secure the handle could result in damage to the vehicle and or unit. Prior to towing the Easy Grabber, the hitch receiver must have the pin properly secured and cotter pin installed prior to the towing system. The counterweights then need to be moved to the towing position, over the axle, and locked into place. Failure to properly secure could result in the unit separating from the vehicle. The Easy Grabber mobile unit provides overhead anchor connection anywhere on the job site, but operating the unit requires that all users have read and fully understand the instruction manual. Self-retracting lifelines must be securely connected to the anchorage point. All counterweight must be properly placed and all pins are to be secured prior to use. Handling of the mast requires that all components be properly secured. Do not allow anyone or yourself under the mast while being raised or lowered. Use only approved fall arrest components with the unit. You must follow the fall arrest equipment manufacturer's specific requirements when used in conjunction with this device. Inspect prior to each use and monthly by a competent person other than the end user. The end user shall conduct a quarterly inspection and document the findings. At no time should this unit be placed in service if any type of damage or defect is found. If you have questions, contact Easy Lifeline.